Good evening everyone, this is Ashton with Red Modeling Paint Studios here with another paint cast tonight. Thanks for joining us. I do have a couple of changes that I've made to audio tonight. So if you guys in chat could do me a favor and tell me how things sound, I would appreciate it. Just want to make sure I'm coming through okay. I notice on the last couple podcasts, I've, or paint casts I've done, the audio has been a bit scratchy. Um, you know, like the... Um, the mic is maxing out kind of thing. So uh, I've adjusted the settings a little bit and I'm um, hoping that, uh, that, things sounds, that things sound a bit better right now. So um, yeah, so thanks for being here guys. I know we're gonna have some new people watching tonight. So just wanna take a second to kinda lay down the ground rules and explain how, <clears throat> how this works. I do live paint tutorial sessions with people. Um, a client will contact me and kind of explain what they're looking for in a color scheme. I'll work with them. We'll shoot, shoot a couple different ideas around and um, come up with a, a color palette of sorts to, to work from. And then I use Twitch and YouTube to stream and record tutorial sessions to teach that person how to paint their army. And so um, it's a really cool process. It's really interactive. Um, you get to watch and ask questions and learn all kinds of stuff. So it's a, it's just really, really neat process all around. So um, glad to, glad to have you guys here. If you do have any questions, feel free to email me at redmodeling at gmail dot com, or you can hit me up on Facebook at facebook dot com forward slash redmodelingpaint. Um, just as a quick example to show you, this is the most recent one that I finished. Um, someone wanted to have a legion army painted in some dark blues and purples and after a, a series of uh, back and forth um, questions and answers from, from some emails uh, I was able to get an idea of what they were looking for paint scheme wise and in a series of about four or five uh, paint sessions produced this for them along with um, all the instructions on how to, to paint this and replicate this themselves. So that gives you an idea of kind of what I'm doing here. But if you are watching in chat, or if you are watching live on Twitch, feel free to ask questions. Uh, just type them there in chat, and I will get to them as soon as I can as I'm working through um, the models here. Now what we're going to work on tonight to start with is a nice big beastie bronze back. Um, this is for Scott. So Scott, I've got everything ready to go to paint. Um, the uh, uh, let me get a toothpick here. The seams have been uh, filled on the shoulders. Okay, um, I have left the tusks off, uh, and I've also left this front belly plate off as well. Um, the reason why is because I'm going to paint those things separate. Um, you had mentioned in an email <coughs> that you were uh, just starting out airbrushing, and so I'm approaching this from kind of a, a beginner's perspective as far as airbrushing goes, and. Um, this is a really solid way of airbrushing is to leave parts off or to paint pieces out of t at a time so that way um, it's easier to get into certain areas with your airbrush you don't have to worry about dealing with masking and things like that um, also there's going to be some pretty big color differences as well between the skin and the armor plates um, and so uh, we want to try and preserve those colors differences as much as we can um, now the plan is that uh, there is going to be some purple armor with gold trim or bronze like trim and um, we didn't really talk too much about the skin on this guy um, at least that I can recall so what I'm gonna do is just kinda show you how I typically paint bronze backs uh, I usually use a nice elephant like shade of color and then on the back here right around his mane um, I know in the in the art there's kind of a solid pattern that's done in kind of a bronze color I actually like to do striping on the back of, of the shoulders here um, sounds odd at first but but when you see the final product I think you're, you're really gonna like it and what what is more interesting about it too is, is it's very easy to do it's very cool and it looks looks quite nice when it's done so I'm gonna set him aside for a second Get a couple paint cards here. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we're going to go through 
how we're going to get this um, skin down. I'm going to grab a couple colors here. I'm going to stick mostly with P3 colors. Now, the uh, base color for the skin we're going to do in Crixbane Highlight. That's going to be the base color all around. We're going to shade that with Crixbane Base. And we're going to do a couple spot highlights with Troll Blood Highlight. Then we're going to use uh, my favorite mixture of Umbral Umber and Coal Black to do the striping on the back of the, the bronze back. And then probably stick with just uh, Coal Black for the main right there. So get my card here. brush wet and just kind of play this color out so you can see where we're going with it. That is the Crixbane base, or excuse me, the Crixbane highlight. This is the Crixbane base. And this of course is the Troll Blood highlight. And you can see kind of how we're how that shadow is transitioning. Let me just get a little more moisture on my brush there. There we go. And there we go. There, there's your transition from your light. To your dark. You can see it's a nice dark elephanty gray color. And actually over the uh, the white primer, it's gonna it's gonna be quite a bit lighter than this. I mean it's pretty opaque right now because of uh, I'm doing it directly on the card, the, the paint's absorbing straight into the card. But um, <coughs> it's going to uh, it's gonna look quite a bit lighter on the um, on the the skin of the, the animal. And then just for giggles the coal black umbral umber mixture is equal parts coal black umbral umbral umber makes a nice rich dark brownish black color well, I'm a little off there put a little more coal black on than I should have and let's add a touch more of the umbral umber to that just because I a little more coal black on than I should have. There we go. That's better. So you end up getting a nice, almost black color, but still with a little bit of that, uh, you know, brownish blue color to it. It's quite nice looking, actually. So we'll set that aside. I'm going to go ahead and start mixing up my paint to put into my airbrush. And Scott, what I'm going to recommend, I, you sent me some pictures of some of the air models that you airbrushed. And for the first time, I think they're great. They, they look really good. Um, what I would encourage you to do in looking at the pictures that you've sent, though, <coughs> is um, thin your paint out just a little bit more and try and work in layers on your airbrush um, just like you do with a paintbrush you know build build those layers up slowly and gradually it's okay if that first coat or two on your um, through your airbrush is a uh, um, slightly opaque that's fine um, you just want to be careful not to um, apply excuse me apply so much paint at once that the uh, um, it starts pulling up you know you really want to try and avoid that so you know 
slowly build it up, work around your model, and um, keep that airbrush moving. Don't let it sit in one pit, one place for too long. Okay, and just a little more thinner in my paint here. And again, you're going to start with Crixbane Highlight as the base color for the primer or for the model. Turn my air hood on here. Just moving a couple things out of the way here, real fast. Let that dry for just a half second. For those of you who, uh, who are watching live, if you are experiencing any technical difficulties as far as uh, lag or anything like that goes, um, you know, I, I can't control the internet connection, but you know, rest assured this is recording and the, the lag does not record with it. Um, and when I post this up on YouTube in a few days, you'll be able to see the video in its entirety without any of the lag. As you're doing this, Scott, don't worry too much about you know the paint that you get, the overspray that you're getting on the armor plates and such. You know the purple that we're going to apply is going to be a pretty strong color, so it's and this is a pretty light color here that we're working with, so you really shouldn't have too too hard of a you know too much of a problem uh, covering those areas. So you know, just make sure you're getting a nice nice even coverage all the way around okay I think that's pretty good The gray is looking pretty solid, nice and uniform, very smooth. That's exactly what we want. So I'm going to leave him right there. I'm going to clean out my airbrush real fast. We'll move on to the next color. <coughs> Remember, for those of you watching at home, if you do have questions, feel free to ask them in chat, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Okay, Scott, the next color you're going to apply is now the Crick's Bane Base. That's the darker, crate, the darker gray color. <coughs> Excuse me. And you want to focus that color at the bottom of the, of the model. So as I'm spraying the bronze back, I don't currently have any paint in my airbrush right now. I'm just demonstrating. 
So as you're as you're spraying the bottom of your bra, uh, the this gray color on your bronze back, turn him down this way, and have your airbrush going, you know, from that downward angle like so. Okay, that way, all the gray is darker gray is getting on the underside of the model where that shadow is going to be. Later on, we'll go back with a with a paintbrush and kind of refine those shadows a little bit more, deepen them down just a little bit further. But in the meantime, this will this will uh, um, really help create some contrast on the model. And then we'll add a little bit of highlight, which will um, you know further enhance that contrast. So again, we're at this point we're switching to Crick's Bane Base Formula P3. Someone's asking in um, <coughs> chat about thinning paints, so I'm just going to show you guys how I do this real quick. I've demonstrated it before in other videos, but I'll do it here again real fast. These are what I use to mix my paint in. Little medicine cups, you buy them on eBay, usually 100 for like 10 bucks kind of thing. They're pretty cheap. As far as the uh, thinner that I use, I've got it in a, in a separate bottle, but I use the uh, Vallejo uh, airbrush thinner and I mix it half and half. So I had filled this bottle up halfway with the thinner and then the rest of the way with distilled water. So that's, um, that's what I use. I, I don't feel like the thinner has to be full, fully concentrated to, to, to use it correctly. Uh, then what I do is I'll take my, my paint that I've transferred to dropper bottles, I'll add a few drops of paint in the bottom there. Okay, you see how much I got there? And I'm usually mixing my paint at about a anywhere from a, a 1 to 2 to a 1 to 4 ratio of uh, paint to thinner. It just depends on the color and it depends on what it is I'm trying to do. But more, more importantly than the ratio is the consistency. So as I mix this paint up, on the inside of this cup here are numbers. And you can see when I pull my brush up the sides of my cup here, you can see how the paint washes down. And it's almost like the consistency of, you know, kind of a wash you would get from Secret Weapon Miniatures or from, uh, you know, uh, GW or something like that. That's, that's about the consistency that you want, okay? So take a good look at that as I'm mixing that up. I'll mix it up all the way pour it into my, my airbrush and then I'm good to go. Okay, now remember we're spraying from a bottom up angle, so kind of a reverse zenithal type angle going on here. And then slowly build this color up, Scott. Don't um, don't let it get too dark all at once. And you notice how I'm doing this too. I'm not it's not one continuous long spray. It's it's a, it's a slow successive short bursts. That's what you're looking for here. And just keep rotating around and build that up. And you can see how that's already creating some nice contrast there. You see that? Now, and then what you can do is get into some of the tighter places here and just darken things up just a little bit more.
All right, and you see how that's looking? It's exactly like what we want right now. Okay, looking really good there. So I'm going to empty this out now, and I'm going to mix my Troll Blood highlight color in now, and that's going to be the uh, the highlight color that we're going to use. Troll Blood Highlight, that's what we're using next. Now, when you're applying this highlight color, Scott, I wouldn't necessarily say to do the reverse of what we just did with the shadow, you know, where we maybe spray it all from this angle, because we don't want to wash out the mid-tone. We want to keep that mid-tone color in there. <clears throat> so focus your highlights on specific spots, kind of like you did on the picture of, the, of those crow hunters that you sent me, okay? Um, you know, as I'm looking at at this guy here, we're probably going to focus on maybe the shoulder, right here on the back, right here on this lateral muscle. Same thing on this side, maybe the, that shoulder there. Focus on the face, uh, maybe a little bit on the on the on the pectoral right there. So, you know, don't just you know globally apply the the highlight. Try to um, try to actually apply it where where it would naturally be. little too crazy right there. I'm going to have to clean that up a little bit with a brush. That's okay though. That's the thing about airbrushing. It's not uh, not exact. You can make mistakes. And it happens. A little bit on the belly there that might show through. A little bit on the chest right there. And there we go. There's our shadows and our highlights put on there. So now I'm going to set him aside for a second. Just put him at the top of my screen right there. And I want to show you, Scott, how we're going to add the bronze back striping on this guy. Um, if you have seen Trevor Christensen's bronze, bra bronze back in his orange scorn army, that's kind of the design we're going for here. And this is kind of a um, an airbrushing trick, okay? And it's essentially what we're doing is what, what I call faded lines, okay? And I'm going to demonstrate this with ink because it uh, inks a great way to demonstrate airbrushing, to be honest with you. So let me set this aside. While I'm grabbing a couple things here, there's a question in uh, the chat that I'm going to answer real quick. Let me just read it real fast. Someone is writing. I may have missed, but what do you mix water into the thinner? Are you just trying to stretch the somewhat expensive thinner? Or does it alter the properties in a favorable manner? Uh, he said he doesn't feel it needs to be all thinner since I want to reset just the water is basically the same thing. Um, yeah, it doesn't necessarily change the properties of the thinner, at least that I've noticed. Uh, it's just stretching it out. <laughs> it, it is expensive and and um, it makes it 
last a little longer by doing that. Okay, so I've got some uh, some ink here ready to go. Put it in my airbrush. Now, essentially, what a line fade is, Scott, is just what it sounds like, where the 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 paint goes from a thick or opaque consistency to a thin or faded consistency rather quickly. Okay, so if you watch me airbrushing here, there there's a solid line. Okay. It's, it's the same consistency top to bottom, okay? Um, this would be a faded line. Okay, you see how the, 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 the opacity of the ink changes? It goes from dark to faded. Now the way this is done, let me zoom out a little bit more. Okay, that's as far as I can zoom. Is you'll, you'll sit in one spot, building up the opacity, and then you slowly bend your wrist down, or not slowly, you actually you, you do it rather quickly. You bend your wrist down, and as you're bending your wrist down, you lift up on the trigger. And you may have to build it up, um, you know, do a couple passes to build up the color that you want. Um, that's the cool thing about airbrushes, is, you know, as you're painting, the further you pull that trigger back, you know, the, 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 the more opaque that pattern becomes, okay? And that's what you're trying to, to achieve with these faded lines, okay? And that's essentially what I'm going to be doing on the back of the bronze back there, is some of these faded lines, but they're going to go uh, this way across the back. Um, down. We'll probably do maybe three on each side. It should look pretty cool. Okay. So remember the colors that we're using for this. Zoom back in here. The colors we're going to be using for this, Scott, are going to be equal amounts of umbral umber and coal black. Now this is where also I think you kind of have to take a moment and plan out how your paint, how you're going to paint this, okay? You don't want to just, you know, plop down and, you know, put these stripes on here because it's going to look odd, all right? Um, you want it to look natural, you want it to look organic, you want it to look like it's part of the animal. And so what we're going to do, let me find something to point with here, give me one second, where'd my toothpick go? So what we're going to do is we're going to f first apply this mixture of uh, the blue and the brown, a fairly solid heavy line right along the base of the mane here. Don't worry about getting onto the main, but we'll cover that in just a second. But you're going to apply a fairly heavy line of it there, and as thin as you can get it. And then, starting probably about here, we'll put our first stripe down, come down from probably the base of here to about the shoulder, and then second stripe right here, and then third stripe, and then maybe a fourth. And, and what I'm envisioning is the stripes are going to get shorter the further down the back we go, and then we'll repeat it on the other side. So, you know, first stripe, you know, first uh, pattern heavy along the main here, and then kind of fade them out from there, okay? And then we'll, I'm kind of thinking, too, that we might add a little bit of a bronze color in uh, as a final highlight, just to play with it a little bit. Um, I'll show you how to do it. That way, when your airbrushing skills get to the point that you can do it, um, you'll have this reference to, to fall back onto. And um, so maybe we'll add a little bit of P3 Bloodstone just kind of, you know, right, right here with maybe some smaller stripes on it. So to build this up, you want to build it up slowly. So that means you want to 
only have your trigger pulled back probably 10 to 20 percent okay and just slowly build that line up One second, guys. This is a little more blue than I want it to be. I'm just adding a little more brown into the mix here. Test this out. Okay. All right, see how that looks, nice and dark. Do the other side now. All right, and see how that looks from the back. Nice solid base to go off of there. And now remember, we're going to just go real slow and qu uh, quick hand movement, slow movement. Does that make sense? So you're going to move your hand quick, but you're going to move it across the surface slowly. Okay? Next stripe. And the last one. Same thing on this side. See how that's looking? Um, switch to a new color now. Someone's asking in the chat what size needle I'm using. This is an Iwata Eclipse with a 0.35 needle. I do have a Harder and Steinbeck with a 0.2, but I use that for more detailed work. A 0.3 is a pretty general size. Um, for those of you who are new to airbrushing, I, I recommend starting with a 0.3 and then working down to a 0.2. It's quite a bit different um, working back, uh, working with that small of a size of needle. Okay, let me grab my next color here. coverage with an airbrush isn't so much based on um, needle size guys as it is on your distance from the the surface of the model when you airbrush there's three very important things to remember when you're airbrushing first is your distance from the needle to the surface you're you're spraying on generally speaking the further away you are the bigger your coverage the second thing to remember is how far back you're pulling on the trigger okay the more you pull back, the more dense your coverage is. And the third thing, thing to remember is how quickly you're moving across the surface. Um, I really believe that everything else in airbrushing, and I'm going to repeat this, is secondary to learning those three things. If you can learn to master how far you are from the surface, how quickly you're moving over the surface, and how well you're controlling your trigger, 
Everything else in airbrushing is secondary. How thick or thin you mix the paint, what type of paint you're using, what type of primers you're using, what effects you're trying to achieve, I honestly believe they're all contingent upon those three things. So we're going to add a little bit of bloodstone, Steve, now onto these stripes and just refine them a little bit further. Um, I'm going to mix the paint a little thinner. Go to about a four, uh, one to four, you know, one part paint to four parts thinner. And um, really uh, watch my, um, my trigger here, how far I'm pulling back my trigger because I, I want to build this up slowly and not, uh, not pop it all down at once. And this is new. Usually I don't add this little brown part. Uh, someone's asking regarding my airbrush what my air pressure is set at. I keep my PSI right around um, 25 to 27 pounds. Pretty cool looking there. Just got out a little bit more right in there. A little too much there. All right, I can work with that. So that looks pretty good. I like that brown on uh, on gray co contrast there. We can even go in with a uh, with a paintbrush here a little bit later too, and um, and kind of refine that just a little bit more. Um, you know, maybe even lighten them up just a touch more right in the middle. So, so that's um that's about as far as I'm going to go tonight, Scott, on the bronze back. Um, the reason why is I you know with just doing all this fresh airbrushing, I don't want to damage any of that surface it's got to dry for a day or two before I um, start doing the brush work on it um, but I'm not done though uh, I am going to be um, for those of you guys who are watching uh, live I am moving on to another project here so I'm just going to clean out my airbrush here turn off my air hood and uh, move on to project number two for the night and then Scott um, I will be getting this up on YouTube probably in the next uh, three to five days three to four days definitely by the weekend that way you can watch it and um, if you're not on not online right now and then uh, give me your feedback and I can make any adjustments that I need to make uh, going forward <laughs> 